two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, out. You all right, bud? Uh, I guess so. Why don't you suck them this they suck? just open up when I tell him. This is a pretty tough place to train a fighter, isn't it? Well, I don't know. If we could just do a little road work. I'll suggest that to the warden. Hmm. All right, get down there, boy. Rubbing, not drinking. I just found that out. Now listen, kid. If I'm going to be your trainer, you got to do what I tell you, see? Well, I do, don't I? Well, didn't you hear me yell to you to open up with your right? Well, Dave, you know I... Yeah, I know. Afraid you'll kill somebody again, huh? Listen, you ain't that tough. I wouldn't be in here with a manslaughter charge against me if it wasn't for what happened to Sweeney. Yeah, if you'd only hit him during the fight instead of after the bell. Well, I had no choice in the matter. He didn't like the decision. He rushed across the ring, and I had to defend myself. Yeah, I know. There was something screwy about that fight, though. Nobody will ever make me believe he died from that punch. Maybe you're right. But every time I get set to throw a finishing punch, I see Sweeney's face, and, well, I just can't let it go. Listen, you're being paroled tomorrow. I'm getting out next week. We got a future before us, plenty of dough, if you'll only let loose when you get in the ring. I'll do my best, Dave. With my brains and your right, we'll carve our names in a private niche in the elusive Hall of Fame. Mm, what? I read it in a book once. <laughs> Flop. Maybe you'd better read another book. I will sometime when I'm not so busy. You know that George Miller turned out to be a good friend? Yeah. If it hadn't been for his promise of employment, we never would have gotten our parole. You know that, don't you? Yeah, I guess you're right. You reminded me of another boxing promoter I used to know. Say, I'll bet you're thinking of a gal named Claire. I'll bet you're right. <laughs> She's promised to meet me the day I get out. Yeah, they all do. I was pretty much of a fool to arrange his pardon if you're still so interested in him. But I've told you time after time, George, I was never serious with Gene. Nice boy, but... I much prefer a promoter. But it will make it decidedly inconvenient if he's still infatuated with you. Now, don't you worry about that. I can take care of him all right. Well, if that's true, perhaps you'd better meet him tomorrow. Nonsense, I'm not going up there. He knows my memory's bad. And I just forgot the date. <laughs> Come in. Oh, it's you, Harry. Yes. This is one time I can tell my host the truth and say that I sincerely hope I will never come back here again. I can understand that. And if I ever see you again, Harris, I hope it won't be here. Thank you, sir. Goodbye and good luck. Thank you again for everything.
baby hole there. Oh, hey, take it easy, take it easy. I'm not used to all this affection. Oh, you're a sweet pup. You'll never know how much I've missed you. Mm. No, I was really expecting another girl to meet me. Hey, how did you get here? Mary! So you're the one responsible for Babe being here? Yes. That was nice of you. I'm glad to see you looking so well. Thanks. You've made me very happy. That makes me happy. I didn't know if you'd remember me after three long years. Why, how could I forget you? I've looked forward to this day for a long time. So have I. Looking for someone? Well, yes, I, I sort of expected another friend to meet me here. What's the matter, babe? Hungry? I could eat something, too. Well, I could use a little food myself, if you know of a place where they serve something besides stew and beef. I know the nicest little tea room, and they serve homemade donuts. Donuts? Oh, you've remembered my weakness. Uh -huh. Did you hear that, babe? Donuts. Come on. We're going donut hunting. Still working for Miller? Yes. How does it happen you have the day off? My grandmother was very ill. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. But you look like you'll pull through all right. I look like... Oh, oh I see. <laughs> <laughs> Little steak, baby? That a girl. Miller certainly proved himself a good friend of mine. If it hadn't been for him, I never would have gotten out on parole. Don't forget, you were one of the best box office attractions he ever had. I always tried my best. I'm going to work very hard to show Mr. Miller I appreciate everything he's done for me. Jean. Yes? I was just thinking how nice it would be if you'd get out of the fight racket. Not a chance. It's the only thing I know, Mary. Mine? Not if you don't splash. I won't. That's a fine thing. I'm afraid you're not very proficient in the art of dunking. Well, I'm a little bit out of practice. But if it hadn't been for that bad knuckle, I might have made the Olympic team. Just an amateur, eh? Let me give you a little professional coaching. Well, go right ahead, Professor. Now, particularly note the little finger. The little finger? That's to get the necessary balance. Oh, I see. Then, you take it between your first and your third fingers. Thus. Thus. And note the elbow. Never do that. No? Down. Much more graceful line. Mm-hmm. Then, you place it over the cup, so as to get the proper range. Why? Oh. <clears throat> <laughs> oh, I see, Professor. Would you mind showing me that little trick again? I'm not a very apt pupil. I could drown and you wouldn't care. Oh, now that isn't true. Here, I'll help you now. I wouldn't use so much sugar in my coffee if I were you. Why not? You might get granulated eyelids. See, even Babe didn't like that one. And I have something Babe will like. Here, Babe. Oh. Babe likes a little finger with her donut. Serves you right. You know, you're a swell kid. Glad to hear you say that, mister. Because I kind of like you, too. How does it feel to be free again? Great. But being on parole has its disadvantages. Particularly since one can't marry. I didn't know you contemplated marriage. It's all I've been thinking about for the last three years. You can imagine my disappointment when she wasn't there to meet me today. Who wasn't there? Why, Claire. Claire Thomas, you remember her. 
Yeah, yeah. Well, of course. I had no idea you felt that way about her. She's a swell person. Even if her memory isn't so good. I ought to go see Miller. Feel like going back to work? Sure. Let's go. Today, Miss Comstock. My plans will change. Oh. Miss Babbins, this is Mr. Harris. Oh, I'm very glad to know you, Mr. Harris. Thank you. Oh, and may I present Henry? How do you do? Are you Kid Harris? That's right. Say, I'd sure like to see you use that right on a couple of guys I know. Is Mr. Miller in? Yes, but he's busy. Who's with him? Claire Thomas. Claire Thomas? Oh, excuse me. Uh-oh. You'd better stay out here, babe. I wouldn't want you to get jealous. Ah, girl. Stay there. Hi there. Hello, Jean. Well, greetings. Gee, it's good to see you. What, no kiss? Well, I don't like to make a public demonstration. Gee, gee, please. I expected you to meet me up there. Well, you see, I... We didn't expect you until tomorrow. I asked Claire to come over so we could plan a rousing welcome. Then that accounts for your neglect of me. Yes, yes, of course. Come on, babe. I know exactly how you feel. Well, my boy, your vacation is over. Suits me, Mr. Miller. I'm ready to go back to work. I suppose it will take some time for you to get back into condition, eh? Not at all. While I was on my vacation, I worked out during my spare time. I had several fights, too. How'd you do, kid? Fairly well. Dave kept me in pretty good shape. Of course, his only complaint was that I couldn't do any road work. <laughs> <laughs> this Dave must be a very amusing character. He is. I met him when I went up to see Gene. He's had a world of experience in the fight game, and we can always use a good man. He'll be out next week. I arranged his parole, too. And in view of the fact that he looked after my interests, I'm going to let him work with Gene. Take advantage of all this hot copy and Jean's publicity build-up. Well, I think I'll be going. After all, you gentlemen have many things to discuss. No, there isn't anything we can talk about right now. Dave will be out shortly and Jean will go into training. And from that time on, he's going to be a pretty busy boy. Then there's nothing to prevent me taking you home. Why, of course not, Jean. I want to thank you sincerely, Mr. Miller, for everything you've done for me. I was glad to do it. Well... Along. Hope to see you soon, Claire. Well, did you miss me, babe? Why, well, that's the same much you used to have, isn't it? Yes. Come along. No, I don't think we'd better take the dog along, is it? Well, uh, all right. Anything you say. Do me a favor, will you? Yes, what is it? Take Babe to Mrs. Durkin's and tell her I'll be home right after dinner. And you tell her if she doesn't treat me like a long-lost son, I'm going to scare me up another landlady. Yes, Mr. Harris. Thanks. Oh, come along, Jane. Well, thanks, kid. Don't mention it. Well, does that guy Harris rate? He's here ten minutes and walks off with the boss's gal. He's welcome to her. Haven't you anything else to do but discuss Miss Thomas? I'll take care of it, Miss Babin. Yes, Mr. Miller. Oh, it's you. Your grandmother better? About the same, sir. I did everything I could. 
I hardly hope she approves. Thank you. Now, I want you to call up all the newspapers. Contact the sporting editors and tell them that Harris is again going to fight under my management. Yes, sir. Say, while you're at it, tell the feature writers he's back, too. Jean's hot copy. Imagine this story. Convict returns to the scene of his crime. Do you really want the papers to print that? Why not? It's good publicity. We'll commercialize on what happened to Sweeney. And everybody and his uncle will want to see that pile-driving right of Jean's. From now on, you'll be known as Killer Harris. What an idea. Will he pull them in with that? I suppose it would be good business. You don't approve, eh, Miss Comstock? Truthfully, no. Perhaps it's because I'm not a very bloodthirsty person. And then again, I was thinking of Jean Harris's feelings in the matter. You're the most adorable girl in the whole world. Sweet of you to say that, Jean. And I do say it, in spite of the fact that you neglected me terribly while I was away. It wasn't deliberate, I assure you. I'm probably the most miserable hand at correspondence in captivity. I wish I had you in captivity. Serious? I was never more serious in my life. I love you, Claire. And I love you too, Jean. He's forgotten all about us. Oh, Jean. Where's well, Mary? What are you doing here? After you left, I rented a room for Mr. Durkin. I thought I could help her take care of babes. Well, that was nice of you. I'm glad you're here. I've got a lot to tell you. She loves me, Mary. He loves me. It does make a difference, doesn't it? All the difference in the world. You know, she only wrote to me a few times when I was in there, and when I got out and she didn't meet me, I, I thought naturally I'd lost the decision. Now I know how she really thinks about me. I hope you find complete happiness. Thanks, pal. Haven't you ever been in love? Yes. And you know exactly how I feel. Well, sort of. Well, I'd better get to bed. This has been a big day for me. Mm. I want to thank you again for bringing Babe to meet me. Come on, Pop. Good night. Good night. Come on, Pop. We're going to go chase the cat. Good night, Jean. Good night. Say good night to the lady. Not a bad idea, George. 
No, my nerves are a little wobbly. After all, Jean Harris is quite an exciting person. You aren't trying to make me jealous, are you? You know, I hadn't thought of that. But it isn't a bad idea. I wouldn't try it if I were you, my dear. Jealous? You approve of it? Why, well, certainly. Well, I gave that story to the papers. It's good publicity. I'd rather not have that kind. I hope people would sort of forget about that killing. We might as I'm promoting fights. And nobody's going to tell me how to run my business. I have no intention of doing that, Mr. Miller. I merely object to being known as a killer. After all, I was unfortunate. I'd like a chance to live it down. Don't you understand? Now listen to me. If you want to jeopardize your freedom, just keep on talking. You're a nice boy, and I like you. But you're not on the spot to tell me what to do. But this killer business... All right. We'll go easy on the killer stuff. Thanks. You know I don't want to go back to that big house. Now, don't worry. I'll look after your interests. Why, well, I've already got your fight. Swell. You all right, Dave? Yeah. Well, you wanted to do road work. Yeah, but I didn't expect a cross-country run. Say, what state are we in? Trouble with you is you can't take it. <laughs> well, as long as you can, I'm satisfied. You know, it's great to be together again, Dave. Yeah. Especially out here where you got something to look at besides four gray walls. Say, hey, how's that gal Claire coming along? Ah, fine. She's a great girl. You know, there's nothing in the world like the feeling you're important to someone. Yeah. You must be swell. You don't get any mileage on that thumb at all, do you? No, I guess it just lacks personality. And a manicure. Look, watch the improvement. What did I tell you? <laughs> Hi, Mary. Hi, yourself. Nice of you to drop out, Dave. It's getting to be quite a habit of yours, dragging my dog around. Well, I didn't think you'd mind. I had a lot of time on my lunch hour. And I heard you telling Mr. Miller you'd be out this way. So here I am. You don't need to make excuses, Mary. I'm glad to see you. Besides, you can be useful. How? Oh. I have a hunch my trainer wouldn't mind a ride back to town. I wouldn't be a bit surprised if I became very popular around here. You're very glad to see me. Uh -huh. Your trainer wants a ride back to town. Right. And in this basket, lunch. I'll vote for you. Oh, uh, Dave, you remember Miss Comstock, don't you? Why, sure. She works in Miller's office. Hiya, Dave. Fine, thanks. 
You're pretty smart. Bet you can't guess what's in that basket. <laughs> Lunch. <laughs> that was easy. I overheard you two talking. <laughs> <laughs> well, you do the honors, will you? Let me help you. Oh, with pleasure. Exit, canine. Come, 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 come. Dinner is waiting. I have a very choice table right near the orchestra, madame. Garçon, you may lead the way. Oui, madame. I think you'll find this table just right, madame. A perfect three-point landing. Perfect. Thank you, Garçon. You know, babe, I think that guy's got his gals mixed. My, this is a lovely place, isn't it? Pardon me. But isn't that Mrs. J. Worthington Buckingham over there? Just a moment and I'll see. I believe it is she. My, my. How contented she looks. It's the plan. Hey, are you two punch drunk? <laughs> <laughs> if I may be so rude as to interrupt, may I suggest that uh, chow is served? <laughs> <laughs> In the pinky condition, sir. Uh, uh, uh. I'm glad to hear that. Miss Murphy is a pretty tough boy. Oh, don't worry, Mr. Miller. We can take him. You better run along home, Gene. Get some rest. Tonight is your big night. If you beat Murphy, I can get you a fight with Knockout Riley. That's something to look forward to. The best of luck. Thanks. See you after the fight. Right. I want to wish you lots of luck, Mr. Harris. Thank you. But, Ron, you're going to knock down a mite out in, Killer. Button up your mouth, kid. All I can say is I'll be in there trying. I'll be rooting for you, Gene. I know you will. Take it easy now, Murphy. A little hot. How do you feel, Dynamite? All right, boss. But I wish this fight was over. Afraid? Sweeney was a pretty good friend of mine. If the wife wasn't gonna have a baby, and I didn't need the dough, I wouldn't let Harris take a crack in my chin. Finished there? I will be, in a minute. Relax. Too bad the dog can't see you fight. Well, that's all right. I'll tell him about it later. Looks like she's got a little fight on her hands as it is. <laughs> Send a wind up. You better get ready. Right.
be right back, Mr. Graham. Where are you going? I got something I want to do. You better stick around. The fight might be over before you get back. Ladies and gentlemen, the most important event of the evening, the main event at 15 rounds or less, in this corner, Dynamite Murphy with a hundred Sure, he never laid a glove on you. Come on, now, get a snap out of it. I'll get him in this next round. You know, Murphy looks tired. Yeah. Has he got any sock? Nothing to worry about. But he's acting kind of funny. Yeah. Mm. Please. Is that anything that should happen to him? 
I, I just couldn't stand it. <laughs> This man is dead. Are you sure, Doc? I don't see how it could have happened. Well, it has. This is tough. I'm very sorry for you, Jean. You'd better come with me. But it was an accident. Yes, I know. Chief will probably want to talk with you. All right. I'll get your clothes, kid. We better tell Murphy's wife. Can't you tell her, Mr. Grab? I got something to do. You better come with me. You won't let them send Jean back to prison. I'll do the best I can. You seem unduly interested. I am. You're in a bad spot, young man. All right, it was an accident. But knowing you had a deadly right, you should have given up fighting. Captain, I didn't hit him hard enough to knock him out, let alone kill him. The fact that Murphy is dead proves that you were wrong. But Murphy must have been sick or something. Why, he was all tuckered out, even in the first round. You aren't going to hold Harris, are you? The coroner's inquest will decide that. You are out on parole, aren't you? Yes. Well, get in touch with the board the first thing in the morning. Their decision will have a great deal to do with what's going to happen to you. Don't worry, Mary. Is there anything more you want of me, Captain? Not now. Come on, Claire. I'm going to take you home. All right, Jim. Well, Dave, will you see Mary home? Sure. Thanks. Gosh, I forgot all about Babe. Oh, she's in your dressing room. Yes, I know, but do you mind if we pick her up? Well, you see, Gina, I'll get her, Jean, and take her home. That'll be swell. Thanks a lot. Don't mention it. Is there anything else, Mr. Miller? No, I think not. Anyway, I want to talk to the captain. Good night. Uh, by the way, how is Mrs. J. Worthington Buckingham coming along? <laughs> Come on now, buck out of it. Imagine that. Now what are we going to do? There must be a watchman around someplace. I'll see if I can wake him up.
I'm Harris's trainer. Uh, he left something in the dressing room we'd like to get. All right. You know, I shut that door when I came in here to get Jean's clothes. What's that? That's Babe. It came from one of the other dressing rooms. Maybe we can save her. This thing's got me puzzled. I hardly touched him. I think you're worrying unnecessarily. The thing will be straightened out in a day or two. Well, I'm not worrying about myself. It's about Murphy and his family. I think I'll see if that coffee's done. It might help your nerves. You don't have the pantry. Remembering your weakness for them, I thought you might like one. And, and suddenly something unforeseen occurs and kicks the props right out from under you. Yes, life is like that. Have a donut. Thanks. Oh, come on, Jean. Snap out of it. about now. I don't see there's a chance of saving her. Oh, but you must. I'll do everything I can. Maybe if I could get the poison out of her system. You know, if anything happened to baby, it's just about killed Jean. I'd better phone him. You think he's still at Claire Thomas's? I'll see. Do you know her number? Yes. I've called it many times for Mr. Miller. Excuse me. Certainly. Yes? This is Miss Thomas speaking. Oh, yes. Yes, he's here. Just a minute, I'll call him. Miss Comstock is on the telephone. She wants to talk to you. Funny. I was just thinking of her. Thanks. Hello, Mary. What? Poison? In Murphy's dressing room? Yes. I don't know how it happened. There isn't any hope. Please hurry, Jean. Where are you? I'll be right over. Babe's been poisoned. Yes. I gathered that from your conversation. Won't you come along? 
Well, I don't think I'd better. You see, I... I'll call you later, then. trying to get in touch with you. Yeah, it looks that way. I just saw her asleep. Listen, Bert, this is no time to be jealous. Jean's dog has just been poisoned. Ha! Well, ain't that too bad? I'm afraid it is. You see, the dog was found in Murphy's dressing room. What? What do you do with the stuff you put on Murphy? Well, I used it all up. You applied it with a towel? Sure. Did they find it? Now, don't tell me you didn't get rid of that towel. Well, I didn't get the chance. Grim wouldn't let me out of his sight a minute. Maybe I'd better go back and find it. Don't be silly. That would only leave you open for a lot of questions. Well, what are we going to do? Now, the thing for you to do is casually drop over there in the morning. Meantime, how about a cup of coffee? Well, I could go for that. Just one time, you got to stick out your chin and take it. Yeah. It's getting callous. Well, if I could just find the person responsible for this, I'd... Say, I'd like to have a look around Murphy's dressing room. Well, I'm afraid that wouldn't do any good. Maybe not, but I'd like to do it just the same. One company? Yeah. I want to thank you for your efforts, Doctor. I know how a mutt like this gets under your skin. I'm sorry, there was nothing I could do. You'll take care of her. Yes. Thanks. Are you falling for the ass, kid? Why, of course not, Bert. You're the only man who interests me. You're not kidding me, are you? Don't forget I spotted you with Miller last week. That's just part of the game, Bert. Well, you'd better be on the level with me. I'd certainly be a sucker for taking care of Murphy and Sweeney for you, only to have you give me the runaround. Now, don't be childish. I can clean up as much on the next fight as I did on Murphy's. I'll have a quarter of a million dollars. Gee, a quarter of a million. Baby, you only bet on sure things, huh? Right. That's why I bet on you. Sorry to bother you again. Oh, that's all right. How's the dog? She died. Well, that's too bad. Mind if we look around? Why, no. Let's come right on in. Thank you. Was there anyone here before these two people came back this evening? Not after they took Murphy out of here. I guess the baby was just accidentally poisoned. She was lying right on that towel. Be careful. What good is that going to do? I don't know. It's just a hunch. We might be able to find out why Murphy's tired this evening. 
you don't think. I don't know what to think, Mary. I'm going to take this to police headquarters and find out. Is there anything else that I could do? No, thank you. Well, Harris claims he didn't hit Murphy hard enough to hurt him. He feels that Murphy was poisoned, too. That would be the most satisfactory answer in tonight's tragedy as far as you're concerned. But there's one drawback. The autopsy showed no evidence of poison. What's your decision as to the cause of his death? Heart failure. It isn't that I want to get out of anything, coroner, but I'm positive Murphy was not himself this evening. Probably he was in poor condition. No, it wasn't that either. Doctor, do you know of any poison that might be applied externally and not take effect until, say, half an hour or so later? Yes, there are several. But as I said before, there was no evidence. Wait a minute. I read about a poison of, that's taken from a Chinese herb and kills when applied externally and evaporates through the bloodstream. Well, then, suppose an animal got hold of it, took it internally, and would it leave a trace in its body? Yes, that's a peculiar part of it. Then Claire Thomas can help us. She's been to China. One of her best friends is a Chinese physician. We can check with her in the morning. Captain, I wish you'd square me with the parole board and have tonight's accident to judge the knockout. I don't understand. Well, I think we have a pretty good idea of what killed Murphy. And I wouldn't be surprised if Sweeney got hit the same way. Maybe you're right. I don't know why anyone would want to frame me, but our only chance of finding the guilty person is to keep this matter quiet. I'll do anything I can. But how are we going to bring this killer out into the open? That I don't know. Mr. Millis promised me a fight with Knockout Riley. I'd like to go through with that fight, and in the meantime, we could keep our eyes open. Well, how about Riley? Aren't you placing him on the danger spot? We'll have to take every precaution. May I make a suggestion? Why, of course. Well, I wouldn't say anything about this to Mr. Miller or even Miss Thomas. Are you suspicious? No. Only we shouldn't let any more people in on our secrets than is necessary. And that sounds sensible to me. You know, I wouldn't miss seeing Harris fight for anything in the world. Well, Riley has got plenty of nerve, all right. Boy, I'll say he has. Hey, do you realize Harris is the odds-on favorite? What for? He hasn't been in training. He's in no shape. No, but he's got that right hand off. Yes, the but he never money. throws it. He never throws he it. He doesn't. Wait until uh, you see it fight. This fight should be fought. Maybe if we girls get together, we can prevent another death in the ring. We must. Well? You won't have cause to be jealous of Harris much longer. No? Why? I'm putting you in his camp. I met Mr. McNamee through his sister. Why, well, I'm glad to have you take an interest in my business, Claire. Miss Thomas convinced me that I'd have more of a chance with you than with Grant. I've got the biggest attraction in the prize ring. Of course, I'm sorry he killed those fighters, but I guess it's in... In the game, after all. Oh, it sure is. How would you like to be in Harris's corner the night of the fight? Say, I'd like nothing better. I can offer you 200 a month and your expenses. It's a deal. Sold. Hi, Mary. Hello, Dave. <laughs> How's Jean? Swell. Hey, you talk as if you hadn't seen him for a long time. Well, it's been an hour and a half. I don't know how you stand it. <laughs> Say, wouldn't it be swell if we could prove that Sweeney was poisoned, too? Oh, gee, Dave. That would make me so happy. You know, if Gene was pardoned, he could marry. <laughs> Hi, Dave. Hi. What's he doing here? Mr. Miller just hired him. He's going to be in Jean's corner. Hmm, that's funny. 
something wrong? Nothing that we can't work out. You haven't got much time, Dave. Tomorrow night's the fight. By that time, we'll be all set. Be afraid to do what I tell you. Use that right. Paint him in with the left and then let your right go right on the button, see?
man is dead. Boy, this is tough. He was one of the best fighters I ever had. Well, guess there's nothing else I can do. It's just one of those things that happen. Give me a hand, will you, Mr. Miller? Sure. I hope you got rid of the towel this time. Ah, uh, don't worry. I got it in my satchel. Say, it took longer to put that guy out than it did Sweeney and Murphy put together. I had no idea you were connected with this, Claire. But Harris, the poison. Dave substituted alcohol. Let's get out of here. Wait a minute. Come on, let's go. I'd give anything to have her back. She'd be happy if she knew how much she's done for you. Cleared your name, secured your pardon. I guess you're right. You know, if it hadn't been for all this, you two might not have gotten together. Maybe Dave's right. At least, we'll always think so, won't we?